This is a mid-2014 MacBook Pro that I picked up on eBay for just over £100. At the original price, this was a great deal, but sadly the speakers were very crackly and basically unusable. The seller offered a partial refund and I ended up getting this for £90, or about $100. Was this a waste of money, or is there serious value here? If you want to talk to me directly, or join the growing TechMW community, consider joining the Discord server, a link is in the description below. If you paid $100 for a near decade old Windows laptop, I'd probably ask if you were feeling okay, but for a Mac with a retina screen and one of the best keyboards in history, I'd say you easily got your money's worth. That's essentially what I have here. This model has a 2.6GHz dual core i5 4278U, 8GB of DDR3 RAM and a 256GB SSD with Iris graphics. It has the standard 13.3 inch retina screen used on many MacBooks between 2012 and all the way up to last year, with a resolution of 2560 by 1600. This still looks absolutely fantastic today. It's very bright for how old it is and the sharpness is also hard to beat, especially at this price range. I'll also take a minute to talk about the build quality. It's amazing. The full aluminium construction combined with the thin profile of the Retina MacBooks makes this surprisingly sturdy. There's no creaking when you flex the laptop at all, which is a great detail when compared to used Windows laptops at this price. Unlike newer MacBooks, this still has the glorious light up Apple logo and the trackpad is virtually the same as the ones today, albeit just a bit smaller. The keyboard is also one of the best, in my opinion, ever made. That includes desktop keyboards too. It was just a perfect design that I believe should have been kept for the 2016 models, but unfortunately it wasn't. The port selection is great too. Between 2016 and the release of the M1 models, the ports were limited on MacBook Pros. By that, I mean USB-C was about all you got. This made any Mac made before 2016 very appealing. My one has MagSafe 2, two Thunderbolt 2 ports, two USB 3 ports, headphone jack, full-size HDMI, and an SD card slot. That's quite a selection for a laptop so thin. Now that the hardware is out of the way, you probably want to know how this works running the newest version of macOS, which is currently Ventura. Now, in my opinion, macOS actually hasn't become that much more difficult to run since Yosemite came out in 2014. It's only really the newer versions of apps and websites that bog older machines down. The actual system underneath is virtually the same, albeit with a few new features added in each revision. The mid-2014 MacBook Pro is not officially supported by Apple to run macOS Ventura, but this didn't stop people making a patch for it. People have been making these for years. I used to run my 2009 MacBook Pro on Catalina, which was four versions above its official end of support thanks to patch tools. The latest and greatest patcher is called the Open Core Legacy Patcher. This enables owners of most Macs made between 2009 and 2015 to run macOS Big Sur, Monterey and Ventura, even when Apple themselves don't allow installation. It works by modifying the existing installer to include legacy drivers which enable these older machines to run with no issues. It also changes around the code somewhere, so the installer doesn't block the installation from happening. For my MacBook Pro, I downloaded the latest version of the OpenCore Legacy Patcher from the official website. I needed a 32GB USB flash drive for this. There's no need to worry about finding an installer for macOS, as the tool can do it for you. Once the tool was downloaded, I opened it and was greeted with this nice GUI. To prepare a USB for the Mac, I first hit Create macOS Installer. If you have one already, you can use it and won't have to wait for it to download. If you don't, no worries. I just pressed download macOS installer and it began downloading the full Ventura installer right away. This is very handy if you have a Mac that can't actually download the newest version of the installer. This will also work with Monterey and Big Sur. Once this is done, I return to the main menu and pressed build and install open core. This process will take the installer and modify it with the aforementioned legacy drivers and changes in the coding. It does this for your specific device. Once it was done, a dialog was displayed giving me the option to install it to my disk. 
Hitting that button began the install process. It restarted a few times and I made sure to boot from the installer instead of the SSD every time it restarted, as otherwise it would break the installation. Once the install was complete, my system was completely up to date and ready to use on macOS Ventura. I've had absolutely no driver issues, but it's possible you might run into a few issues with your Mac as the operating system is constantly changing. In terms of day-to-day -day use, this MacBook Pro is quick, very quick. The app launching time is almost indistinguishable from if this Mac was running Yosemite or High Sierra. The inbuilt apps open perfectly and run smoothly as well. So far, I've had absolutely no issues using Ventura over High Sierra, which used to be my go-to for this MacBook. I would also say the battery is actually better than before. I'm not sure if the newer versions of macOS are better optimised for battery consumption, but it definitely seems to last longer than it did before. So what are my final thoughts? This went a lot better than I had expected. I did not see this Mac being able to run the newest version of macOS so smoothly, and yet it does the job really well. I think that for a first time Mac user, this setup would be perfect for someone looking to get into the operating system on the cheap. Compare this to the base model MacBook Air that costs 999. For one ninth of the price in this scenario, you're getting the same screen, better ports, and in my opinion, a better keyboard. Bear in mind the battery won't be as good as these models are getting old now, but mine as an example is good enough for most people. If you're after a MacBook for college or university but don't have the money to splash out, check out one of these on eBay. You'll definitely get your money's worth.